Good evening. Um, we're going to start our selectmen meeting. Can I have an approval of the minutes from January 10th? So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. All right, we're going to go into executive session. Can I have a motion to go into executive session? Move to go into executive session. A discussion on code enforcement with attorneys pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056E. Second. Okay, all in favor? We're in executive. Move to come out of executive session. Second. All in favor? Okay. Um, I have a motion to go into executive session. Pursuant to 1 MRSA section 405, 6A. Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. I have a motion to come out of executive session. Move to come out of executive session. I have a second. second. All in favor? Unanimous. All right, Sue. So What's happening? What's up with you? We're ready. Did you? Uh, it says 80 seconds. I'm muted, Sue. So. Sue, so you're muted. Yes, I've got to let Hannah oh, and Wayne it? back in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Shut the door. And, and that will take that will take a moment for them to sign in. Okay. They're coming. Sorry. No, that's it. All right, we got 25 minutes to get the rest of this meeting done. So, before we go to the budget. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. <coughs> well, we I, have a two minute meeting before. It's okay. static. Yes, some of us have. <laughs> <coughs> I still hold the record. Oh. <laughs> so I hear. <laughs> Teresa, are you, are you sharing? Are you sharing to you? Yeah, ready and come. Thank you. You want Ralph? Sure. I tried to get Ralph to get me one, but he, he looked at me like. Get him from him. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bite bag. Oh, the candy store. Oh. Sorry. No. <laughs> All right, we got Wayne. We got Hannah. Yes. We all set to go on that? Yes. All right. So consideration of business license application. Wayne, there was just one deficiency in your report that I read. Is that correct? That's correct. The uh, fire alarm testing which couldn't be scheduled until May 2nd. And uh, so that would be a conditional approval. Okay. Hannah, tell us about your business you're opening. Oh, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> My name's Hannah St. Pierre. Um, I am taking over a law firm that's been established in Raymond for about 10 years, Crawford Law. Todd Crawford is... Um, leaving to work for the state and he's asked me to take over the practice so essentially i'm just looking to have a business license for the purpose of practicing law in this area um, the physical location is 1288 roosevelt trail the same as crawford law had practiced in um, and that's about it do you have any other questions just general law is that what you practice or Yes, there's a focus. I have a focus in, in civil matters, uh, mostly a lot of family law, probate, estate planning, guardianships, adoptions, terminations, those sorts of things. Landlord, tenants, small claims. Um, so mainly civil, maybe a little bit into the criminal sphere as I grow. Okay. Well, we wish you well. Well, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Raymond. Can I have a thank motion? I make Move a to accept the business license condition conditional on the uh, proper the final fire alarm system check second moved and seconded all in favor unanimous welcome Hannah thank you so much everybody all right is Kurt on the line Kurt LaBelle nope what's uh, that no Kurt said this one was he had another commitment and this one was quite um, straightforward. It's simply folks that qualified for a homestead, oh. and um, it should have been on their property, and it was missed. Give that to Ralph. One minute, motion, Ralph. Uh, move to accept the abatement on uh, yeah. Nancy L. Rivers and Daniel McEwen. Uh, let's see. 
watch the box. It's on that piece of paper. Okay. Uh, map 019-055, account 175, total abatement in the amount of $322.50. Second. Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Next on the agenda. Consideration of number of members on the Comprehensive Plan Committee. Um, we just received a resignation from the Comprehensive Plan Committee. I don't want this committee to get too large that they get caught up in process and it's just harder to work with big committees. So isn't there ten on there? Yeah. Was ten on there? There's nine on there now. So you need that one number out in case there's like a vote. Then you yeah. I, I always think an, an odd number is better on a committee. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would I w I was hoping to propose that we leave the committee at nine members and let them start this process. It's going to be a couple of years probably to get this done. So I ask you know Hill and Pete, do you do you agree with that number? You think that's a good number? And, Kayla. Kayla, are you okay with nine? Uh, uh, yes, nine is fine. I would agree with you. It makes for better voting. Well, okay. One thing that you know what, that, that I would I would make a statement on that is, you know, like we do with some other committee, you, you've you've got the nine members of the committee, but as you if you want to branch out into some sub subgroups and things like that, you can bring people in on those that are not necessarily in the committee but can you know can help out on on research and this and that and the other they just come back to the it comes back and the the committee is the only one that the members on the committee are the only ones that have the vote but you can make use of as many people to help research and and do things like that as you as you want so an, another thing too is you guys do have an application i know that you were going to bring it forward can he just be in the waiting in case something happens that you guys do lose another member Yep. Yeah. That way you've got somebody already vet it through. Thank you, Peter. <clears throat> uh, just, just to be very brief because I know time is short. Uh, at the January 17th meeting of the comprehensive plan, um, we decided um, that we would continue to accept applications until the contract planner was on board. So that was the decision of the committee. That doesn't supersede any decision of the select board. We, we, we serve it at, at your pleasure. Um, on, at the Fe February 6th meeting, there was a discussion about the makeup of the Comprehensive Plan Committee, okay? Mm -hmm. And that was uh, the concern, um, and I raised it, and it was just based on the fact that we did have an applicant and we had potentially a second applicant as well. And on review of the composition of the committee, uh, it was determined that there, of the uh, 10 that were currently on the committee, three were realtors in the community. And so uh, we had a discussion, and that discussion was just based on the fact that um, uh, according to the state guidelines, um, a, any community committee, but certainly a comprehensive plan committee, um, should be representative of the community. And that's in all aspects. So gender, age, um, new to the community, here for the community for, for years, um, conservative, liberal, people in the middle of the road, all of that sort of stuff, because that's what a comprehensive plan committee is supposed to be. Um, so I raised a concern, and this was solely a concern on the fact that we had one applicant uh, that was a realtor, and there was a second in the wings that was contemplating applying for the committee who was also a realtor. And so I raised that up as, as, as a concern. We took a vote at the committee, and I can tell you that the vote was seven to three to bring that applicant forward to the select board. So that just gives you the background of, the, of this, this issue. And certainly, as I say, it's up to the select board to decide who serves, how many people are on, and the like. Um, I'm just bringing that to your attention. So can I ask him? Yep. So 
Peter, what would you suggest then? Because I did, I did hear that conversation you had with having the three realtors. So what would you do? Throw anybody that's not on it, like like that. I didn't realize there was two applicants. Would you just take all those applicants and look at them overall to see to give it that mix? I, I would say we only have one applicant. The second one that was in the wings, and I have not heard whether that applicant actually filled out an application. I don't believe so. Sue, you, have you received? No, no, I haven't. Okay. Um, so my, my feelings are on it. I'll just restate it. Uh, I have full confidence in the integrity of this comprehensive plan committee. Okay. Um, and, and therefore, um, I, what I did was I brought that up informationally, mm -hmm. uh, just so that uh, uh, the committee would be aware if they weren't, that the uh, select board would be made aware um, that, that there was the potential for at least the appearance of a conflict of interest. One of the things um, that was suggested to us that we did review at our last meeting was that for the sake of transparency, just to remind everyone in the committee that anyone on the committee can call for a roll call vote. Therefore, it can it, that would help with the transparency so that if there was any sense that there was a voting block or uh, an issue like that, it, it's, it's a matter of record. Okay. okay. Thank you. So I'll make a motion, <clears throat> not normal for the chair. No, make I'll a make motion. a motion yes, that, yes. that we stay with nine members on the Comprehensive Plan Committee instead of 10. Second. I move and second it. Any discussion? Mr. Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, would it, if with that structure, could any other members that are nominated be considered alternate members? Or is that different than having them in the wings, in your opinion? They, they could, what they could be, they could be, do is be, you know, they could go and serve as, as subcommittee or whatever to the committee. Yeah, they wouldn't be, they would be non-voting members. Which I feel is a, a great thing <clears> to have <throat> for a committee like that. I yeah. think that if you had three, four, five people that brought information to the committee and then the committee ran, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. That's the ideal. Yeah. So nine on the board, and then as many as they can recruit to help them in the background, and that's fantastic. Yeah. They, they, they would they not be working. committee members, Sue. So they, they would be in the wings in case somebody resigns or drops out. You always have someone to fall back on. Because the, I know the planning board has at times operated with alternate members so that if a regular member could not attend, the alternate member could attend. Yeah, I don't think that's how the comprehensive plan committee would work okay perfect just wanted to be clear thank you okay. all those in favor unanimous you got nine members you're ready to go all right. um consideration of placing solar panels on town-owned property all right go for it so i know we've been approached several times over the years as far as doing solar panels and if you're out and about driving around these days, you see solar fields all over the place, all over the place. So um, the, the property up on top of um, the dump up there, and there's the dump, there's Egypt Road, and there's one other road too. Can we check into doing solar panels? And how can it kick back to the town to either lower the budget, can people buy into those solar panels so it can offset? Because I'll be the first one to say, my power bill, when I got an $800 power bill, I just about went off on the guy at CMP. And uh, it's ridiculous. And with CMP right now, it's never been, and, and it's crazy, it's crazy. So I don't know enough about solar panels. I don't know enough about, I get it all the time in the mail, buying into solar panel, um, Indus Farms? industry itself yes. really so whoever would know more information on it but if we've got that land up there and as everybody is seeing on the news more than anything is the PFAS thing is kicking pretty bad um, Raymond Elementary has PFAS over there in their waters and they're trying to figure out that um, but I don't know if we'd be ever be able to do anything up on that dump. We already site. tested it. There's no PFAS up there. Exactly. Exactly. But can we utilize it to our benefit? And how can we pull the people of Raymond into it too? 
I don't know enough about it, but I bring it to you guys to. Well, Don, Don did some research. Okay. Yeah, there's a number of things you could do here. I mean, you can empower the staff to to do some consulting and see what the range of opportunities are and bring a proposal or proposals to you to consider. I mean, some towns have gone so far as to have a, you know, somebody who does sustainability within the town as a staff member. I'm not suggesting that. You could have a committee put together to, you know, investigate options and alternatives. You know, that's another op a thing that towns do. But there's just so a wide, wide range of, of opportunities out there, and I'm, I'm with you on it. We've got some properties that are ideally suited. To me, to me the uh, the property off the uh, Egypt Road is is one of those. I mean, we got a closed landfill. Uh, it would be ideal, I think, for for solar, and uh, it's going to be near the new substation that the Central Main Power is uh, developing. Um, you also have parts of that Patricia Avenue parcel, as you point out, that were used in the past for MSW disposable disposal. They should they should be investigated and, and see if they're, they're appropriate. You can um, the town could develop and own this thing. We could work with somebody else and lease the property. There's just so many different things that could happen. I get these. You talk about yeah information. I get information mailed to me all the time from people. Most of them just want to secure a lease from that and sell it to somebody else. That's what you don't want to do. So, I mean, you, you could. You, you could have a consultant help you, or you could put together a committee and have a consultant help you. You're going the same <coughs> way, ultimately, if you want to know the range of things, because we're not experts in solar. You'd have to investigate it. And if I'm not mistaken, most of these solar companies are from out of state. Yes. They come in and they invest, and they're making money on subsidies and okay. selling. That's what revisions do. Right. Okay. And so, right. and revisions, of course, the leader in this in Maine, but there are others. And uh, and there there may be other ways to structure this. Um, you know, there are people in town who develop these things on their own. And Gray uh, has uh, are the ones along the turnpike. Yeah, that's the other thing you can passing. do too. Is you can contact. Is that Gray? Other. That's Gray. Yeah. So there's other. Th I don't think that's Gray's. That's not Gray's facility. I don't think. But that's oh. Gray has a separate one, I believe. Okay. So so Wyndham has done this. Um, I think theirs is just on buildings. I think. But you know, Gray has a separate one that's. I, th I think not connected to their their buildings. They may well have them on buildings. I mean, basically everybody has these on buildings these days. Now they're going into the the into solar the farm fields. thing. Yeah. yeah. So so I mean, I, I can't I can't have. I can't tell you tonight what the best thing to do is. It requires some study. So why don't we do this? Allow Don to look into and Chris and Alex to look into some possibilities of what we can do, and is you know. Is the old Patricia Avenue site feasible? Is the old Egypt dump Road. on Egypt Road feasible? Yeah. You know, we, so okay. so we can either put it on the next meeting in April or or May. I mean, I don't think there's any big hurry to jump into this, you know, but we need to gather more information. Right. I don't see it in April. Okay. I, I think possibly May. And if you yeah. want to know about suitability, you're going to have to have, you know, an engineering yeah. view of it right okay so are you guys in favor of it 100 mm -hmm. percent. No. good yeah. good yeah. <clears throat> real quick and, and this is a little bit down the road but there's already been discussions at the comprehensive plan committee uh everything from forming a separate community committee to look at um uh solar in the community uh, some of the things that we've already heard is such things as uh, levying impact fees on development um, things like uh, and, and you, you raise a good point as far as uh, the gray um, development um, th that's kind of ecologically or sustainability the ideal um, it, it makes no sense to be trying to go green and uh, get energy and the way that you accomplish that is you cut down trees that are reservoirs for carbon dioxide so it's, it's those type of impacts that need to be studied and looked at as well Yep. I think it's a great use of land. I mean, what Gray did, and I, yeah. I see it even up in Augusta on all the all, all the all the yeah. all the turns right. and all that. With that road, it's never going to be used for anything. No. Yeah. So utilize it for that. Don't utilize someone's field and mm. right next to a house. I mean, utilize the term. You know, right. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And then we have those properties, and we're never going to do anything with them. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. yeah. No. Good. All right. That's all right. great. Um, That's one thing Ralph just mentioned to me, I think, is important, is to accept the resignation letter that we received. Uh, move to move to accept the resignation from Brad McCurtain from the uh, Comprehensive Plan Committee. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Um, 
All right, town manager's report. We're down to eight minutes. I can do it. Thank All you, right. Peter. Okay, so basically we've got confirmed dates for upcoming regular meetings, um, April 11th Hi. and uh, May 9th. And um, upcoming budget schedule, March 14th, uh, after the meeting, uh, department head review number two. So this is, uh, this is what we're doing tonight. Uh, March 21st, uh, joint workshop with the Budget Finance Committee, March 28th, Select Board Warrant Review and Recommendations, April 4th, Budget Finance Committee uh, Recommendations of Budget Articles. April 11th is the Select Board Final Warrant Approval during a regular meeting. And then the upcoming election schedule is June 8th. And uh, so that the deadline to request absentee ballots is June 8th. June 13th, Municipal and RSU 14 elections and vote. Uh, the annual town meeting warrant via secret ballot at the Jordan Small Middle School's gym from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. So there's a lot of dates and a lot of information there. So it's on the website and uh, you can follow along on our uh, YouTube channel, Raymond TV. And uh, so I hope people will take that opportunity to, to learn about the budget process and, and that's what's following in a couple of minutes. Just a couple other quick things. Um, we're collecting deposits, $20 deposits for 65 gallon recycle totes. This is something that came out of the recycling committee. We need 100 orders in order to have a viable order for municipal pricing. So if somebody wants to do that, I think we have a number of orders already. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're very close to 100 already. But so the town's going to do that and uh, it's going to be solely at, uh, at, at uh, citizen cost. But we will accept deposits and, and get those ordered. Uh, we've got 13 new chairs on the way. Right here. <laughs> Here. Wow. Here. I fit so nice into this one though. It's so yeah. formed. You know what? Yeah. It's wide. It's very wide. I feel like I'm like in a so pool. I, so I kept it short. Glad tonight. they that, said that to you. That's, that's all I've got. But, uh, yeah, we're going to get rid of the 35 year old chairs. Oh, nice. Or 40 year old chairs, whatever. Well, this one's not bad. Well, these are newer. Some are newer. Yeah, are newer. Yeah, I'm the only one with the archaic one. Yeah. I got, no, they For yeah, no, her so birthday, we gave her that chair. Nice. Yeah. So all right. That's all. Thank you. Any public comment? Seeing none, any selectman comment? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? All right.